Now, how many of you know that smell is a powerful thing? Our noses are incredibly sensitive. We pick up the smells. In fact, there's a part in our brain that specially uh, picks up smells, and that's how we smell. We smell through our brain. Isn't that interesting? Not through your nose. It's through your brain. And smells are powerful, especially the smell of fire. They say that when you burn something in a house, it's very hard to get rid of the smell of smoke. How many of you have ever burned toast? And when the toast burns, it's very hard to get rid of the smell. It clings. And they say what you should do when toast burns or when you have burn smells in your house is you should get a big industrial fan and prop it up on one side of the house, open the doors, and then send this blast of air which sends all the smell out. I believe we need a blast of the Holy Ghost on us to get rid of the smell of fire on us. Because when the enemy brings you under fire, when you go through a fiery trial, when you've had all sorts of manure dropped on you, you should come out not smelling like fire. And I want to speak to you today from a key text in Scripture, and I've entitled the message, How Not to Smell Like Fire. Because you meet some Christians, and they smell like fire. In fact, when someone talks to you, you should be surprised at what they've been through. You should meet someone, and you're like, what? Have you been through that? I, no, you would never have said it. Good. You should not smell like fire. Now, in a moment, we're going to read a text, but let me give you some background to it. The Bible talks in the book of Daniel of the three men, including Daniel the fourth. They were taken from Israel, and they were sent into captivity in Babylon by King Nebuchadnezzar. He changed their whole way of life. He educated them with his education system, the Babylonian educational system. He changed their names, and he tried to change everything about them, which uh, they allowed to happen to some degree, but they wouldn't change their diet, and they wouldn't change their commitment to God. These three men, firmly tied, fell into the blazing furnace. Then King Nebuchadnezzar leaped to his feet in amazement and asked his advisors, weren't there three men that we tied up and threw into the fire? They replied, certainly, your majesty. Verse 25, he said, look, I see four men walking around in the fire unbound and unharmed. Don't you underline those words, unbound and unharmed. And the fourth looks like a son of the gods. Obviously, that's pre-incarnate Jesus that appears there. Verse 26, Nebuchadnezzar then approached the opening of the blazing furnace and shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out, come here. I mean, what's more absurd, throwing them in or calling them out? (laughs) But surely the man was impacted. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fire, and the satraps, prefects, governors, and royal advisors crowded around them. They saw that the fire had not harmed their bodies, nor was a hair of their heads singed. Their robes were not scorched, and here's the key, and there was no smell of fire on them. What do you smell like this morning? I want to give you some keys so that you can live your life not smelling like smoke. So number one, the first thing you need to recognize this morning, and I just want to emphasize this over and over, recognize that the war on our souls is a war on our faith. The war on your soul is a war on your faith. And so point number two this morning, if you're not going to smell like fire, we need to establish a clear and committed faith. What is it you really believe? What is it you think about God and know about God? What is it that you really understand from Scripture? And what is it you can confess that you believe? You must be clear on that. Number three, are you still with me? Don't be surprised that there's a war against your soul. Some people are surprised. What, what's going on here? You know, those who stand up for Jesus will stand out. And don't allow the trials and the attacks on your life to get you to a place where you're like, what's going on? You expect it. Number four, faith often comes under fire, but it is only matured, fully matured in the fire. Our faith comes under fire, but it's only matured in the fire. This is important, church. When you're going through the fire and there's an attack on your soul, those who face the flames always see his face. People often say this, I would never have known the Lord the way I do if I hadn't been through that. 
Some of you are going through fire at the moment. You're facing a war against your soul, and you're like, what's happening? Don't be surprised. And don't let the smell of fire come off your life. Just keep facing ahead. Stay committed. Have a clear commitment. And say, Lord, I'm going to keep going no matter what happens. I'm not going to have a compromised faith. I'm not going to have a concealed faith. I'm not going to have a corrupted faith. I'm going to have a clear faith. I'm committed to you. I'm serving you. Then you know what? You'll show up. In the midst of the fire, he'll show up, and he'll make himself real to you, and you'll come out not smelling like fire. Fire.